It was quite scary to start a new school and think, oh no, I'm not allowed to go to the toilet. What if I need it? What if I wet myself? You can wait 10 minutes. They know how to deal with people with physical disabilities. They've got things around school to help them walk. But there is not a teacher that knows specifically about my problem. And they don't really understand so much as I'd like them to. It isn't my fault. This is just absolutely out of my control. No one would choose this. Music by... Thousands of ordinary children across the UK suffer with continence issues. In this film, they'll share their stories about how these issues affect them every day, both at home and at school, alongside the challenges both they and their parents have faced. Eric, the Children's Bowel and Bladder Charity, work to support these children across the UK, illustrating how small actions can make big differences. Bladder and bowel problems are very common. Some people have more complicated bladders and bowels, they're born with something wrong with them. But for most people, when they're born, everything's in the right place, it just doesn't work properly. So the most common symptoms that they'll get are, from the bowel point of view, constipation. And from the bladder point of view, a bladder that's not holding on to the wee properly. So they get frequency, urgency, and, and some wetting, which might be in the daytime or the nighttime. Brenda Cheer has been a paediatric specialist continence nurse for the past 15 years, and since 2013, she's been part of the ERIC team. Recently, she's been working with Dr Carol Joynson from the University of Bristol, looking at the links between continence issues and school performance. I got involved with ERIC in 2004 when I was a researcher at Bristol University. I've learned from all of my research what a negative impact continence problems can have on the development of children and young people. And especially if these problems happen at a, a very sensitive period of life, like during adolescence, this can be really devastating for young people. One young person we spoke to described his problem as not life-threatening, but life-ruining. So that really hits home the adverse impact that continence problems can have. It's a common misconception that continence problems only affect very young children. It is in fact quite common for young people in secondary school and beyond to still be experiencing these issues, and not just at night, but at school as well. Schools can play a big role in supporting children like Harry, Carrie, Callum, Owain and Millie, but at first they may be reluctant to talk with staff. The issue of disclosure of continence problems is a very difficult one. Because, so for instance, in schools, young people fear telling their teachers that they have a continence problem because they think the teachers might treat them differently. It's hard, but they need to talk to staff at school. Not to tell every member of staff, but a person, choose somebody that is their go-to person. The staff have got to be receptive to that, but the young person's got to be brave and actually got to choose a member of staff to tell because school can then help the young person. Imagine trying to support a child and you don't know they have a problem because most of these young people appear outwardly healthy. This is a hidden problem for most of them. So doing this research, we want to try and help teachers to be able to provide that support that young people with continence problems need. Young people also need to be really, really brave and, and, and tell a trusted friend. We know from so many young people that have told us that once they told a trusted friend, then it made living at school with a bladder or bowel problem so much more bearable. These young people perceive that there is a, a really negative attitude to having continence problems beyond when you are a young child. So it becomes very socially unacceptable. And this makes it difficult for young people to make friends because they're carrying around this secret with them they don't want to tell their friends that they have this problem. Children and parents often feel like they have nowhere to turn. This is where Eric's helpline can provide valuable support. 
Amy answers calls and emails from parents and children, providing guidance and crucial advice in sometimes challenging situations. I remember one particular email in particular from a parent that was explaining about her 15-year-old son who had constipation basically and was struggling at school. It got to the point she was saying where they kind of at a loss of what to do anymore. He was kind of in denial himself and um, he basically told his mum he wanted to die because of his situation. I do worry about certain people thinking of me, especially if I'll still wear myself if I do. And yeah, I feel like it's gonna be a pain really. I worry that he's gonna to get to a really vulnerable age, like when he's 18, 19. You know, we've got this suicide epidemic going on. It's been going on for years, and I worry that he might get to that age and be, oh, I'm fine, and actually be so not on the inside. There can be serious long-term impacts for those with bladder and bowel issues. The effect on attendance and concentration in both lessons and exams means that many underperform academically, and this often impacts future education and career choices. However, most parents and children are just concerned with getting through the everyday. Not, not we all the time, like it is right now. Yeah. Every time I'm standing up, I just we every second. For example, this has happened before. I would have an accident and then I had to go and get changed. But it's a, it's a pain because I have to miss um, part of that lesson. When I put my hand up, it would take ages for them to acknowledge me because they're too busy doing other things. You kind of have to either tell your friends the whole class or not go at all. It's a bit awkward. The children are going to the toilet regularly. They're missing parts of lessons or whole lessons, so they have to catch up on work. And sometimes the opportunities might not be set up. During exams, they can sometimes get very anxious about the need to use the toilet that affects their concentration. If there's restricted access to using the toilet during exams, they worry about missing out on valuable time. The most important things for anybody with any bladder or bowel problem are firstly to have plenty to drink, so they should have the, a good number of drinks, the right kind of drinks and spread evenly across the day. And secondly, they need to go to the toilet at regular intervals. One of the things that enables that is using a medical pass or a toilet pass and the children are able to use that discreetly by just flashing the card and leaving the classroom without having to explain to the teacher. In my new school I'm getting a toilet pass and I'm able to use the disabled toilets which I'm going to have a key to. It's like if I'm at school and there's a cover teacher they don't understand what it's like so if I put my toilet pass up to go they don't let me go. Or they don't let me go to the nurse. Um, I think that they need to know that it's hard. Some people have learned, have learned who to trust and not to trust. Because if I tell my friends, they might judge me about it. If they see it, they're going to laugh and stuff. Because any young person accessing a toilet at school has got to be secure in the knowledge that they are in a private space. They've got to be allowed to go there when they want to go there. They shouldn't be asked to wait. Um, once they get into the toilet, they need a toilet that's clean, that has things like toilet paper, that has a bin for disposal of used wipes, of used pads, including in the boys' toilets. Very few boys' toilets have got a bin in them. Um, they, they need a lock on the door so they feel that, that they are safe and nobody's going to come in. <laughs> So many young people that have a continence problem believe they're the only one. You know, it's not something you talk about, so you think you're the only person in the school that suffers from that problem, but actually you're not. But because you think you're the only one, you don't talk to anybody about it. Because you don't talk to anybody, you don't realise the wealth of information that's available. And not just information, but treatment. The majority of young people's bladder and bowel problems are infinitely treatable. But if they don't present for assessment and treatment, then they'll just carry on living with it as a problem. Like, even though like, we look the same, and even though we are different, we're not the same as everyone else, but we're no different. 
things that my friends know as well because they know and they and they um, and they help as well. Like I know it's not only me. Some kids they might think it's just them, but it's not. It's just a lot of people. Schools can play a crucial role in helping young people with these issues. One out of every 12 school-aged children suffers from a bladder or bowel condition. In an average-sized secondary school, there could be 30 to 40 students affected. Some young people do receive the support they need, but for many, systems simply aren't in place. With the support of teachers and staff, these young people can have a school life much like the rest of their peers. All school staff need education and information about continence problems in young people in order to provide appropriate support. Schools should have a clear and discreet procedure for pupils to disclose continence problems. All schools should have a clear policy for appropriate use of toilet cards and medical cards during a class and ensure that supply teachers are made aware. There should be clear procedures for catching up with lessons and arrangements for exams School toilet facilities should allow privacy and must include bins for continence waste for boys and girls. Drinking should be promoted throughout the school day. Water is ideal, but suitable alternatives should be allowed. No child should wait to go to the toilet if they ask. 